Epic Games has released an early access version of Unreal Engine 5, and you might be wondering, is this going to be the future of AAA game development? Well, in this video, I have the exclusive proof to answer that question that nobody else is showing you. You've seen the massive realistic landscapes and the rooms filled with meshes totaling billions of triangles. You've seen the dynamic real-time lighting that seamlessly updates with changes to the environment. You've seen the scattering bugs, the crumbling buildings, and the dynamic animations. But what you haven't seen yet is this. That's right, if you're looking to create the next buggy AAA disaster like Anthem, Fallout 76, or Cyberpunk 2077, then Unreal Engine 5 is the solution for you. It's so advanced, it crashes before you even get the game engine open. That, ladies and gentlemen, is truly next generation. Hello, 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 and welcome to Stupid Game Experiments. I am Axel Cannon, and I was hoping my latest stupid experiment would be playing around with Unreal Engine 5. But as you can see, it has mostly just crashed every time I've tried to open it. Now, obviously, I realize this is just an early access release, and presumably, all of these bugs will be fixed before the official release in early 2022. Hopefully, by then, Epic Games will have also launched their new side business, Unreal Payday Loan Service, so we can all actually afford the latest gen computer rigs that we're going to need to run it. It's either that, or I'll have to finally sell that. That extra kidney I've been saving for a rainy day. But since Unreal Engine 5 keeps crashing on me, it actually gives me the opportunity to talk about the new engine in more sober terms than all the other reviewers you're probably seeing pop up on YouTube. While everyone else is stammering about the amazing graphics as all the blood runs down from their brains to their raging hard-ons, I'll be able to give you a more objective review based on not actually being able to use the damn thing, which everyone knows is the most objective way to review something. To be clear, the Unreal Engine 5 demo does look amazing. However, Unreal is probably a good word to describe it, or at least parts of it. What the promo video left out of its description was just how insane the requirements for that demo are. The download file size for Valley of the Ancients is around 100 gigabytes. That's for a demo with only one character and one boss. That's like over 200 copies of Terraria or 1,000 copies of Spelunky. Not even AAA studios are going to be able to get away with releasing full games at this kind of scale. And if the file size isn't bad enough, in order to get just 30 frames per second, you need a 12 core processor, last gen's high end video cards, and 64 gigabytes of RAM. And again, this is just for a demo. If you want to be making a full game that looks like this, you're going to be giving a lot of back alley blowjobs in order to afford the computer rig needed to run it on. And your game better be capable of giving blowjobs as well if you think players are going to download a terabyte game with only like five enemies in it. And yes, I'm being hyperbolic here. But the point is that as much as Unreal is claiming that this demo release was for game developers, the amazing graphics are probably more useful to independent filmmakers out of the box. For them, the cost of the computer rig to render an amazing scene is still cheaper than trying to do an on-location shoot. This is, however, probably bad news for Pornhub since less amateur film students will have to film their girlfriends to pay for their next indie project. All that being said, while the orgasm-inspiring graphics aren't a reality for most game developers, the other features that were announced might just be game changers. For example, the new animation features are potentially revolutionary for indie game developers. This wasn't immediately apparent from the demo, but if you combine Control Rig, Full Body IK Solver, and Animation Motion Warping, what you get are animations that are so dynamic that they become almost infinitely reusable. This will mean that when indie developers share animation asset packs or buy them off the market, place. The animations will work almost seamlessly in their new game with their own character without having to manually tweak the animation to make it look right. This could be a massive time and effort saver. Additionally, Metasounds could have an equal potential in terms of customization and reusability for audio. Depending on how dynamic it is, we could be looking at sharing sound creation assets that can be customized for each game rather than finished sound assets that all sound the same. Even if it just allows you to dynamically change your soundtrack based on gameplay, that's still has amazing potential. Not only will it lead to more immersion, 
but it will make it a lot easier to make your sound system part of the gameplay with things like the tempo of the music informing players about the world around them. So all in all, the true potential of Unreal Engine 5 remains to be seen, at least until they either fix the bug that keeps causing the damn thing to crash on me, or until I can afford to buy a computer capable of running SpaceX launch control. If you want to help me avoid having to give back alley blowjobs or selling a spare kidney to get a new rig, you can hit that like button to help support the channel. If you enjoyed this epic take on the new Unreal Engine 5 demo, then you should also subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the epic puns. That's all for now. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow.